Hello everyone, it is Tuesday, December 8th, and it is Colorado Gives Day, a huge day for us here at Denver Zoo. We are a nonprofit, we are one of the many that are being supported by Colorado Gives Day and your generous donations. So we're really happy to be going live today and showing you three amazing animals who have very special stories when it comes to zootrition. So before I turn around and show you our first star of the day, who's eager for some snacks and some attention and questions. I want to remind everyone that we are accepting donations today all day. You can go to our website and donate there. You can donate through the button right here on Facebook, but we have an ambitious goal today. We want you to help us raise $83,000 and you can do that by donating $41,500 because the rest of that will be matched by members of our Board of Governors and our Leadership Council and some very generous donors. So we need your help to get $41,500 today, but we are hoping your donations will meet that grocery bill goal that we have. So hello to Xander. Hi to Serafina. Thank you all for tuning in and joining us. So who wants to see our first animal and who knows who we're talking to? I think it was in that description, but if you're excited to see them, let me know in the comments ask your questions. We're really excited to hear what you want to find out about our mandrels, especially Saba. Yep, you're right, Xander. It's Saba and our keeper, Tenley, are here this morning with us. And in the background there is Tuki. She is uh, the other mandrel in this half of the exhibit today with Saba. So Tenley, tell us a little bit about Saba and why her nutrition is so specialized and important. Diabetic. So she was diagnosed in 2016. Uh, keepers noticed kind of some sticky urine and weird smelling feces. So once we started seeing that over and over again, we had veterinarians kind of take a look at her. Um, she was diagnosed with diabetes. Um, so one of the first things we were able to do was kind of reassess her diet to help her with that. And what does she get now that's different than other animals or how did we manage diabetes in an animal that you know, has very particular needs and wants. Yeah, so one of the first things we kind of did was pull back all the fruit. Um, so these guys, they only get low glycemic fruit. So fresh berries, cherries, peaches, um, lots of good stuff. And they get a really small amount of that. And that's used specifically for training. Uh, some other items that these guys specially get, this is a diabetic gel. So it's <laughs> formulated, you can see she's getting excited. <laughs> It's formulated for these guys. It has lots of good nutrients. It's low in sugars, really delicious. <laughs> Look how excited she is for that. <laughs> she really, really wants that. Not, she's not losing a single little crumb of that. And then another thing they get is cone jack. So cone jack, oh, she's getting excited. <laughs> cone jack is kind of like a plant. It's an herb and it forms this like bouncy ball, we like to call it, of food. Um, and what that does, it's really good soluble fiber and it helps lower the blood glucose. So it's really good for diabetics. And these are the types of things that our nutrition team works so hard to figure out. Something that an animal needs, but also that they'll eat. It's always a risk with some of these specialized things that the animal is just not going to want to eat it. Like Sava just did with all those greens in her basket. She said, I'll get to them if I get to them, but I don't want them. And that's why zootrition is so important here at Denver Zoo. We invest in a team with a PhD scientist nutritionist, a nutrition manager, and then three nutrition specialists who work hours and hours before all of us are even up prepping food and getting the right food to the right animal every day. So when you help us raise that 41,500 today and boost it to 83,000, you're helping with that mission to keep these animals fed in a very healthy, sustainable way that they also enjoy. So putting it up in the basket, kind of what is the goal of that? So I kind of just want her to get moving around. Uh, these, especially the gels and the cone jacks, she loves them and she'll actually train for them. Um, so I kind of like to use it to get her moving around. So we have baskets all over the mesh that we can put food up high, food up low and gets them moving. These guys are really big foragers, so they like to dig in the mulch. Um, so a lot of times we'll put seeds and nuts which is also really good and healthy for these guys uh, in the mulch. That way they kind of have to look for it. And Sava has a very kind of varied diet. She's getting her diabetic gel biscuits, her cone jack. What else, is, what else do we have in these buckets for her? So we have lots of good treats for her. So like I said, they're big foragers. So we like to find items that we can kind of toss around. So we have air popped popcorn, 
which they love. We have peanuts, mixed nuts, uh, so many goodies. Sunflower seeds, more peanuts. And then this is the bulk of their diet, is lots of good veggies. Uh, we do a variety of vegetables every single day for these guys. And then they also get another biscuit to kind of help supplement their diet. So they get a ton of good stuff. So explain the social dynamic here. Saba's right up at our at our mesh, enjoying her treats from you. Tuki's kind of sitting back. Why is that? Yeah, so mandrels have kind of a hierarchy. So there's always going to be a dominant female. And if there's a male, the male is always the top dominant. And then within the females, there's dominant. So Saba here, even though she's Tuki's younger sister, she's actually the dominant female between these two. So when Saba's up towards keepers getting treats, Tuki kind of hangs back because she doesn't want to take anything away from Saba. <laughs> but no worries, when they're inside, we like to separate them and that way Tuki gets her special attention with keepers as well. Yes, Tuki's very patient yes. over here, just kind of <laughs> waiting to see if anything comes her way or she can come down. Um, let us know, we've got a lot of people watching, but let us know if you have questions about these animals, their diet, what Zootrition is, if you have questions about our nutrition department. And remember, go to our website and donate for Colorado Gives Day. This is a huge day of philanthropy for all of Colorado and Denver Zoo is always in need of that support, especially after the year we've had. I don't even need to say it, but we were closed for 87 days, so we could always use your support. If you're not ready to come back, if you want to come to the zoo but can't right now, just donate the cost of a ticket. You know, consider that your your donation so that we're still here when you do want to come back and when you are ready to come back. So we really, really want to meet that goal. We want to start off strong today. I Like I said, we have these amazing, generous members of our Board of Governors and Leadership Council and very generous donors who are matching donations today. So if you can help us get to 41500 we're going to instantly double that to 83000 which is how much it costs to buy all the food for our animals for one month. So you'd be helping us out a lot. Someone says, what is, what kind of monkey is this? This is a mandrel. And Tenley, are mandrels monkeys or apes? Yes, so these guys are in fact monkeys. They are the largest monkey species. So that's a really cool fact about mandrels. Um, and the reason you can tell they're monkeys is because they do in fact have a tail. It's really small though. Uh, it's not the long, beautiful monkey <laughs> tail. It's pretty small. Let's see if Saba will show it. There's her tail. It kind of looks like a little ponytail. <laughs> She's like, why do I have to do that? <laughs> but explain, so you said something, you made a gesture and she turned around. How did you get her to do that? Yeah, so these guys we do training with every single day with special treats like their cone jack and diabetic gel. Um, so we are able to ask them different behaviors and anytime they do what we ask, they get a bridge, so we tell them they did a good job, and then they get that special treat. Uh, so Saba here actually also gets insulin injections every single day, and the way we were able to train that was through that positive interaction and that trust between keepers and Saba. Xander wants to know what food do the mandrels not like to eat? Ooh, I don't think there is a food they don't <laughs> like. These guys are very food motivated. They love to eat. Um, I would say they're not big fans of lemons. Not big We've fans gotten of lemons, lemons recently. Some of them like them, some of them don't. Uh, Do they just eat them rind and all? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That, that's just bold flavors. Um, Sarah wants to know where are mandrels native to? So these guys are found in Africa. They're uh, found in the Congo area. So more central west Africa. And if you're wondering, these are females. The male does have the much bigger face, much brighter colored, and has that very Rafiki look from the Lion King. Um, Jelani, our male, is with our other two females and our juvenile Cassie in the other half of this exhibit. Oh, we've got some animals making noises around here. I don't know if you all can hear that. So Saba's showing how she can climb. Are they good climbers? Yeah, these guys are excellent climbers. They are more of a land dwelling primate. A lot of monkeys you think spend time in trees. These guys actually spend a lot of time on the ground. Um, so Jelani are big male. You won't really see them in the trees that often, but the girls you will. You'll see them climb all the way up the trees and all the way up the mesh. Uh, they like to rip the branches off and eat the leaves. Very, very fun. 
What do you think these guys especially excel at? Ooh. Uh, these guys are really great foragers, kind of like I was talking about before. They actually, in their forearms, they have specialized muscles for digging and looking for bugs and nuts and seeds. So they're kind of built to do that. So they are excellent at that. We saw Saba kind of knock this basket that had a lot of food in it. And now it's just going to be on the ground and she'll find it later. It'll be kind of a surprise snack when she forages for it later. Mm -hmm. Is it harder for them to forage here in Denver when the, the leaves have fallen and it's a little bit a lot more stuff on the ground. Oh yeah, you'll see like sometimes big holes like within the mulch and the leaves because they were digging for something good. <laughs> Do they have a good sense of smell then? That helps them find it? Yeah, they're pretty good at a sense of smell, yeah. <laughs> So how do you every day kind of decide who's getting what and how much? Um, so every single, each individual mandrel has a specialized diet based on, you know, their health needs, like her diabetes, as well as their weight. So we want to keep them at good, healthy weights, especially Saba, because of her diabetes. We don't want her overweight. Uh, so we're very lucky that our nutritionists kind of formulize these great diets for them and we're able to give that each day. Um, we also, we give them snack packs, so they're uh, kind of different enrichment food items. So it's not just veggies every single day. It's not the same thing. That way they do get a variety and it keeps it exciting for them. There she goes for the other basket. And, you know, humans with diabetes, they check their blood level every day. They get to do a little stick. How do we monitor their blood glucose levels? So these girls, we check their urine every single month. We give them to the veterinary staff. Um, and then every six months, we check their blood levels to get a better idea of how their diabetes is doing. If anyone knows of Vin, our Gibbon, uh, over in Toyota Elephant Passage, her keeper spent a lot of time during COVID working with her to train her up to present her arm for blood draws to check her diabetes. So that's just another example of how we spend a lot of time making sure we can make our animals comfortable and take care of their health care but with their involvement it's really important that the animals feel like they have a choice and have a role <laughs> and if Saba or Tuki didn't want to be over here right now they could just leave and and run around couldn't they mm -hmm. are they good trainers Saba especially is she is very excited to train she gets really excited for her injection every day uh, as soon as you arrive, she kind of gets this goofy smile on her face and she runs over and throws her shoulder at keepers for that injection. Tuki is a little bit more timid. She's kind of a shy girl. You can see her <laughs> hanging out back there. Um, so she isn't quite as motivated to train, but a lot of it for her is just trust with the keepers and someone she spent a lot of time around. I want to thank Elizabeth Lane for her amazing donation. Thank you so much. You can donate right here through Facebook or go to our website, help us get that $41,500. It's a lot of money, but I know with all of your all support, we can very much reach that and some today. But if we get that 41,500, you already know, we're gonna get it matched and we're gonna be able to raise $83,000 just today. Uh, you mentioned an injection. Dominic wants to know, have you trained her to accept insulin injections? Yep, so she does. She gets one every single morning, first thing when keepers arrive every day. And like I said, she gets really excited for that injection. We think it kind of makes her feel good. You know, it kind of helps her diabetes. So she gets super excited and then she also gets her reward, which is another good reason to take the injection. <laughs> Very much. And talk about how you have to work up to training an injection. You don't just one day call her over and poke her with a needle. <laughs> Yeah, so Saba actually took about nine months to train that behavior. So she didn't get that injection right away once she was diagnosed. It does take a lot of time. Um, so a lot of that is trust. So one keeper will kind of work with her every single day and get her comfortable with the needle, kind of just showing her the needle and then getting it closer to her and closer to her and eventually injecting her with that needle. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of work, but it's really paying off. Mm -hmm. What it, can you show us what her kind of present would look like for that? Yeah. Let's grab some treats for her. Shoulder. So what Tenley is doing right now, she is mimicking the training, or she's doing the training really, with Saba. So that 
Saba knows how to present her shoulder and she gets a reward for it. And then she does the other shoulder too. She hasn't gotten that treat yet because she needs to do the flush against the mesh. And Tenley kind of pokes her so that Saba knows when she presents that shoulder, she's gonna feel something on her shoulder. It's not just about standing there, it's also about her getting comfortable with the idea of being touched and eventually stuck with the injection. And it's yeah, not painful so, for them. Yeah, and so you saw she does know both her shoulders, so that way we can kind of rotate and it doesn't get painful. It's not in the same area every single day. So these treats you've portioned out, are these just Saba's? So they're for Tuki as well, so I will hold some back and that way Tuki can get some treats. I know. <laughs> Poor Tuki's so sweet. She's just just waiting her turn. Yeah, we're able to kind of go up on the roof and like toss some food, that way it scatters more about the yard and they can both forage for it. So with Saba being the dominant one, do they ever kind of scuffle and? A little bit, yeah. So that is part of uh, natural mandrel behavior is, you know, they have to continually reassert their dominance. So every once in a while, Saba will remind Tuki, hey, I'm the boss. Um, <laughs> And Tuki then is like, yep, that's fine with me. You continue being the boss. Other than that, do they get along well? Yeah, they do get along well. So these girls, you don't really see them grooming like you might see in the family, but that's kind of fine for them. They're just chill and they kind of like to do their own thing, which is great. Yeah, Tanya says, thank you guys for all you do. She loves the zoo. Thank you, Tanya. We really appreciate that. Um, let's see. Dominic says what he did with his dog Oreo is he would tap him a few times at the scruff of the neck with the needle capped and then also quickly injected so he didn't squirm. Oh, so that's nice. Very, that's the very kind of similar tact we take. We get them used to the sight and the feel of it so that's not scary because that's really a lot of what the training is. It's just making sure people aren't afraid of or the animals aren't afraid of what's coming. Um, thank you so much, Catherine, for your generous donation. We're up to $150 just here on Facebook. Remember, you can donate at our website all day. If you want to think about it and come back later, we would definitely appreciate that. Colorado Gives Day is a, such an amazing day. It brings out the best in our Coloradans, and we can't thank you all enough for it. Uh, Demer Zoo being a nonprofit depends so much on your support more than ever this year. So if you want to help us get to our $83,000 goal, about what it costs to buy all the food for animals for the month. You can help us do that by just getting to 41,500 because then that's gonna be instantly matched. So thank you all so much for that. I'm gonna wait and see if there are any more questions. And if not, we'll just wrap it up and we'll see you all at 1 p.m. for our next animal. Um, but remember to keep donating, keep tuning in. And if you have any more questions for Tenley about Saba and Tuki, if you have any questions about Kessie, our little baby who's on the other side of the exhibit, I'm sure she could answer those too. Kessie was born in May of 2019 and she's just getting so cute. And if you're a big zoo fan and you're wondering, does her mom still hold on to her all the time? We're happy to report, no. <laughs> now Kessie mimics it and she has a toy she holds on to all the time. But she's a lot more independent, a lot, a lot really bouncy. You gotta keep a quick eye for her in her exhibit. <laughs> Would you say mantles are playful? Um, I would say no. I mean, they can be, especially at Kessie's age. And then Ruby, the other female in Kessie's group, will occasionally play as well. But I feel like as they get older, they're not super playful. They kind of just like to spend their time foraging, sleeping, ripping down branches. <laughs> Hope you all can see this, kind of how Saba's forge just kind of wipes it away. Mm -hmm. Just kind of knows exactly where to pick up. And if she gets some mulch, she gets some mulch. She's okay. She's okay with that. Yeah, so that's like another important part of nutrition. It's not just about, you know, their health needs. We really want to meet their behavioral needs as well. So being able to provide these seeds for these guys every day is extremely important for their behavior. She's really, they leave really no seed left behind. Oh, no. On this, especially when there's <laughs> popcorn in the front of the exhibit. I've seen them just get every single piece <laughs> so they are really really great at picking up great great cleanup yes. great what a great yes. cleanup crew <laughs> i could use that in my living room because i got a lot of snacks on the ground 
So we'll be back at 1 p.m. I want to thank Tenley and definitely Sava and even Tuki. I hope she gets her, her treats here soon and Sava kind of backs off. But thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the questions. And thank you to those who have donated already. We will be back at 1 p.m. with a whole new animal with a whole new set of dietary needs to talk about our nutrition. So thank you so much. And we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye, Xander.